JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week October uh, the 18th until October the 22nd. I am Harlan Bospisuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on uh, the financial uh, the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, market participants got uh, busy straight from the opening of uh, of the week with China's GDP data coming out worse than expected, worse than expected, forcing a reduction in uh, risk uh, exposure. Later in the week, inflation is likely to stay in the spotlight with the UK with the UK and uh, and Canada reporting their their September uh, their September numbers. With no uh, excuse me, with, uh, with the latest supply shortages around the globe, the preliminary PMIs uh, from the Eurozone, the UK and the US may also attract uh, special attention. But now, uh, but uh, let's take things uh, from the beginning and see it in more detail. Today, the most important data uh, on the agenda are already out, and those are New Zealand CPI for the third quarter, and as we already noted, uh, China's um, China GDP for uh, for the same quarter. Getting the ball rolling with New Zealand's uh, CPI, the quarter over quarter rate jumped to 2.2% from 1.3%, pushing the, the year over year one up to 4.9% from 3.3%. Remember that the target range of uh, the RBSZ is uh, between 1 and 3%. So we now have a 4.9% inflation rate. At its latest meeting, the RBNZ raised interest rates by 25 basis points, while in the accompanying statement, officials appeared optimistic, noting that further removal of monetary policy stimulus is expected over time. So a 4.9% inflation, uh, in our view, increases the chances for another rate hike by the RBNZ very soon. And maybe that's why the QE was found as uh, the second in line gainer among the major currencies uh, this morning. However, more aggressive tightening by central banks around the globe could weigh on the broader market sentiment and thereby keep uh, gains on the QE limited. Uh, why? Because the QE is a risk linked currency. And if we have another round of risk aversion in the, in the foreseeable future, any gains in the QE due to a uh, hoggish RBNZ may not be as strong as uh, the most recent ones. Speaking about the broader investor morale overnight, as indicated by the performance in the Asian equities, uh, market participants may have decided to reduce their uh, risk exposure, and the reason may have been the more than expected slowdown in China's GDP for the third quarter. Quarterly terms, the world's second largest economy slowed to 0.2% from 1.2%, something that, that pushed the year-over-year -year rate down to 4.9% from 7.9%. Fixed asset investment and industrial production for September also slowed. Only retail sales accelerated. Now, China has, be, has been facing several problems recently, from property defaults due to Due to ever due to ever grand, excuse me, due to ever grand failure to pay interest to its bondholders, to power outages, and from stricter government regulation on tech firms to fresh lockdown measures due to the spreading of the Delta coronavirus variant. So, the more than expected slowdown in the third quarter may have raised concern that in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, the Chinese economy may have continued to uh, may continue performing uh, purely, and uh, this could have a spillover effect to the rest of the world. And that's why 
uh, it affected so much this sentiment overnight. Now on Tuesday during the Asian session, the RBA releases the minutes from its late test gathering while later in the day, the US building permits and housing starts for September are due to be released. With regards to the RBA minutes, we don't expect any fireworks. At that meeting, the bank kept all its policies and things unchanged, with officials noting that they will continue to purchase government securities at the current pace until at least mid-February, and uh, maintaining the view that interest rates are, are unlikely to rise before 2024. They also appeared relatively optimistic, uh, saying that the setback to the economic expansion is expected to be only temporary, and that as vaccination rates increase uh, further and restrictions are uh, eased, the economy is expected to bounce back. So we believe that the minutes will just confirm uh, what we learned and, uh, from, from, from the meeting uh, statement itself. As for the US data, building permits are expected to have declined somewhat, while housing starts are forecast to have fractionally increased. Now on Wednesday, inflation will take center stage again with the UK and Canadian CPIs for September entering the spotlight. Eurozone's final CPIs for, for September are also coming out, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates and thus we expect them to pass unnoticed. Now, with regards to the UK data, the headline CPI rate is expected to have held steady at 3.2% year over year, while the core one is anticipated to have ticked down to 3% from 3.1%. Despite the potential slowdown, slowdown in underlying inflation, both rates are expected to stay well above the Bank of England's target of 2%. So, if uh, conditional upon the forecasts, uh, uh, being met by the actual numbers, we doubt that um, this could alter market expectations around the Bank of England's future policy plans. Uh, last week, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and uh, Monetary Policy Committee member Michael Sanders expressed willingness to push uh, the, the hike button uh, soon. And, uh, and uh, with that in mind, market participants have been anticipating a 15 basis points uh, hike to be delivered before uh, the end of uh, this year. Remember that the current rate of uh, the Bank of England is, the benchmark rate of the Bank of England is at 0.10%. So uh, a 15 basis points taking that rate to 0.25 to a quarter uh, uh, percent um, rate uh, is expected to be delivered before year end. I think it's um, it's more than anticipated to be delivered in, in December. Now, however, despite the latest rally in the British currency, um, which may have been the result of uh, such expectations, um, we are a bit more cautious with regards to further advances this is because we don't see much room for high expectations to come forward. We already have, uh, we already are in the last days of October and a hike is expected uh, by December. So how much more hoggish can the, the Bank of England, uh, can the Bank of England become? So due to that and due to concerning headlines um, surrounding the UK economy, Remember lately we had uh, um, the shortages of the, the energy shortages and then also the shortages of truck drivers to, um, to distribute uh, oil and other energy products, uh, which uh, may have hurt the UK economy. So uh, we will we will, as, as I noted, we will stay cautious with regards to the British pound. Although the outlook uh, from technical standpoint, if you look uh, technical pictures of the pound against uh, its major peers, the outlook is, uh, is positive. So uh, we will continue aiming higher, but we prefer to take things step by step. We are reluctant to, um, to call for a long lasting recovery in the pound. With the first sign of weakness, we will reevaluate the outlook. Now, as for the Canadian numbers, remember we get the Canadian CPIs as well 
on Wednesday. The headline CP rate is expected to have inched up to 4.3% from 4.1%, while no forecast is available for the core one. As we already noted, uh, accelerating inflation could add to the case for further, uh, for further tapering by the Bank of Canada. Perhaps at the next uh, gathering, which is scheduled for uh, next week, and uh, may prove supporting for the Canadian dollar, which has been performing very well recently. The reason is the surging oil prices. Remember that Canada is the world's fifth largest oil producing nation, while it holds the fourth place in terms of exports. So there is uh, a strong correlation between the Canadian dollar and uh, oil prices. We have oil prices in a, st in a steep uptrend mode, which has been supportive for the Canadian dollar. And we also have expectations of a inflation in Canada accelerating further, which could um, be another fa supporting, uh, supporting factor for the loonie. On Thursday, the only release worth mentioning is the US existing home sales for September with expectations pointing to a small increase. Now, finally, on Friday, the spotlight is likely to fall to the preliminary PMIs for October from the Eurozone, the UK, and the US. In the Euro area, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined somewhat, something that will take the composite index down to 55.4 from 56.4. This could confirm that the latest, uh, that the latest energy shortages or the overall su supply uh, shortages, to be honest, have left their mark on the euro area economy and may weigh and may weigh somewhat on the euro. No forecasts, uh, no forecasts are available for the UK prints, while in the US expectations are for only fractional changes, which, uh, in my opinion, if materialize, um, they may not have a major impact on the greenback as they may barely alter expectations around the Fed's course of action. As of now, market participants remain convinced that the committee will begin its tapering process in November, while according to the Fed Fund Futures, the expected 25 basis points hike uh, to be delivered in November 2022, next year. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. So bye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.